Good morning to each and every one of you this morning, and uh, tremendous welcome to Peace Through the Word on Thursday, the 12th of November, 2020, and uh, welcome uh, again this morning, coming to you uh, from my study at uh, Sun City, Oro Valley, Arizona, in the United States. Uh, this is a daily devotional ministry of Peace in the Valley Lutheran Church in Benson, Arizona, Cochise County, in the United States of America. So thank you for joining in uh, wherever you may be globally. Uh, brothers and sisters, this morning we're going to be focusing our devotion time on the subject of prayer. And uh, how many of you might think that prayer is effortless? That uh, it just, I don't know, comes natural or it's easy to do or what have you. And it may be, but uh, I'm not sure that we realize that prayer is work. And uh, sometimes it can be difficult. Sometimes it can be hard. And it needs to be intentional. Uh, and so, so let me ask you all these things. You know, how would you evaluate your own prayer life? <laughs> You know, Jesus uh, felt it was extremely critical for him to be in prayer to the point where he would get up real early in the morning and go off by himself and pray. And uh, so, I mean, if he felt it was real important and critical, well, what does that say to us, you know? I mean, I find in my own personal life, yeah, it's a, it can be a struggle at times. You know, we crowd our schedules with all kinds of things and stuff and and unfortunately prayer takes a hit you know so anyway uh we're going to look at that we're going to look at uh, effortless prayer and see what all that means for us today praying that that's going to really give us real peace but genuine uh, uh, motivation if you will as well all right so brothers and sisters we come together in the name of the father the son in the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> in the morning, O Lord, you hear our voices in prayer. <laughs> in the morning, we prepare a sacrifice for you and we watch. Our mouths are filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open our lips and our mouths will declare your praise. So glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So brothers and sisters, uh, I want to share with you just a couple of passages of Scripture. The first is um, Proverbs uh, chapter 15, uh, verse 29. And uh, this is a real... Uh, encouragement and comfort for us. And I pray it'll really generate that for you as you hear these wonderful words from King Solomon. King Solomon was who, the one who wrote the Proverbs. And again, it's, it, it's good for us to know that because King Solomon was not only the richest king or governor, whatever adjective you want to use or noun uh, to describe him, that has ever lived and ever will live. Uh, he had it all, you know. Uh, but he was also the most wise. God blessed him with th the most wisdom. And so he says this. He says, the Lord is far from the wicked. The Lord is far from the wicked, very distant from the wicked. But he hears the prayers of, of the righteous. He hears the prayers of the righteous. So who are the righteous? The righteous are those who are trusting solely in Jesus. They're putting all their marbles, all their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Those are the righteous. And so if you're doing that, if, if, you're, if you've got all your trust and you're trusting in Jesus, you're righteous. And you see, we don't, we really don't claim that to our own um, demise. We, we, we really need to do that. We're righteous in Jesus' eyes because of our trust in him. <laughs> you know, serious. That's serious. 
And that's a real blessing, a righteous, meaning no sin. You know? No sin. I have no sin in my life. I'm perfect. Absolutely perfect. In Jesus. I'm trusting in Jesus. And you know what? He just got through telling me. He hears my prayers. And he hears yours. Every one of them. Whether you audibleize it or not. So we'll see that here in just a second. All right? So man, that's... Boy... I, you know, I don't do it justice. That is awesome. So the second passage I want to share with you comes from Matthew chapter 6 uh, in verse 7. And this is Jesus talking. And he's talking about prayer. And, and again, I just got through telling you that Jesus felt it was very critical for him to pray and he would take off and go by himself to do that. But notice what he says uh, in verses 7 and 8 of chapter 6. Um, he says, and when you pray, Jesus says, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do. In other words, being verbose, just, you know, some, and you know, some people want to, when they pray, you know what they're doing? They're, they're preaching. They want to preach in their prayer. Boy, never do that. You know, but they think that they're spiritual so that they need to do that. No, you're not. Believe me, you're not spiritual when you do that. Um, so he goes, and when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they'll be heard for their many words. And that's what we, that's what we see in these pious Christians that pray and they pray these long-winded, you know, whatever kind of prayers, and they think that, they're going to be heard for them. And you know, Jesus is quite frankly saying, I turn a deaf ear on that. Don't, don't do that. That's not impressive. Believe me, it's not. So he says, so do not be like them. Plain, pure, and simple, Jesus says. Don't be like that. He says, for your father knows what you need before you even ask him. You see, we, we seem to think that we take preference precedence that when we put our stamp of approval on it then it's good no when we put our stamp of approval on it it's probably bad all right so god knows what we need before we even mention it we don't even have to mention it but the reason we do it gives him pleasure it isn't a qualification for us to get answered prayer do you understand that not sure most Christians do. They think, well, no, I've got to say this and do this and not do this and all this other garbage in order to get Jesus' attention. No, you don't. So he knows what you need before we even ask him. Okay? That's a good thing. That's a really good thing. <laughs> that is so good that, oh, my word. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So, uh, so then he says, you know, I mean, that is a tremendous, a tremendous truth. So let's see how uh, Dr. Martin Luther unpacks this beautiful truth for us this morning, because he does it so well. He says, believers don't view prayer as hard work, but as a responsibility that's easy to fulfill. And I'm not sure that's really true either, as I look around, but maybe it is. They pray in faith because they know God has promised to hear them. They pray from the heart, revealing their agony and needs. And that's great. That's great. They pray with groans and sighs, as Paul says. The Spirit intercedes along with our groans that cannot be expressed in words. The Spirit knows that God is listening to him in that excessive rambling... <laughs> <laughs> isn't necessary. You know, I just love the way Luther, you know, communicates. You know, he, he just puts it out there. It doesn't matter. <laughs> That's what I like. So excessive rambling, <laughs> excessive rambling isn't necessary. All right? We don't have to do that. All right? So Elijah, Elisha, David, and others in the Old Testament 
used few words when they prayed and came straight to the point. You know, I think one of the shortest prayers was St. Peter, and he said, Lord, save me. Three words. It's good enough. <laughs> All right, the fathers in the early church said it well. Nothing will be accomplished by long-winded prayers. Amen. In fact, the church fathers recommended short, whispered expressions of sorrow in prayers consisting of only a word or two. Boy, I probably need to do that myself in, in, in service, in, in divine worship. This kind of praying can be done anytime, even when reading, writing, or doing other tasks. Very true. I pray while I'm driving. <laughs> Someone might say, oh boy, man, that's risky, but I do. All right. However, people who think of prayer as bothersome, difficult work will never find any joy or satisfaction in their prayer life. You know, they won't. I, I do. I, I, I pray almost constantly. I pray behind the wheel. I, I pray when I'm going out, walking in beautiful desert. I, I've told Jesus so many times how much I love this place, how much I love the desert, how much I love the mountains, how much I love the cactus and all this stuff. He's probably so sick and tired of hearing me say that. <laughs> but I thought, hey, man, you know, I, I, I love it. And he goes, I'm glad you do, Ron. I'm glad you do. All right. So their only source of pleasure will be their continual rambling. If you try to pray, but you have no faith and you feel no sense of need, your heart won't be in it. And if your heart isn't in your prayers, but you still feel obligated to pray, then prayer becomes boring and difficult. It does. Okay. This becomes obvious when you look at physical work. If a job is done reluctantly, it will be boring and annoying. But if a person's heart is in his work, he isn't even aware of the difficulty of his task. So true, so true. So whoever has an inner joy when he prays isn't aware of the hard work and trouble involved. God doesn't want long, drawn-out prayers. Instead, he wants sincere prayers that flow out of a faithful heart. Okay? So I pray that's going to... I really do. I, I pray that's going to really bless you and make you very, very happy. All right? I really do. What a blessing. Boy, I love the way Dr. Martin Luther uh, communicates that. Okay? So, brothers and sisters, uh, let's profess the wonderful Christian faith uh, that is so beautifully summarized in the Apostles' Creed. And so, together we pray. Our Father, I mean... Uh, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lynn Lawrence, so good to see you, my dear. It really is such a blessing, and thank you for chiming in this morning. Good morning to you, my dear. And believe me, from the bottom of this heart, it is so good to see you. Um, so, brothers and sisters, let's pray this, since we're talking about prayer, let's talk about this beautiful prayer, the Lord's Prayer, and, and boy, that's such a beautiful prayer, you know, because there's not one thing that is missing in that prayer. Not one thing. Of, of all the things we could pray about, there's not one thing missing in that one. <laughs> And it's not a it's not a verbose prayer either. So, hey man, let's pray it. Okay, so together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. So almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and then bless its end. That our doings may be preserved from sin and our life sanctified, and our work this day be well pleasing to you <laughs> through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we're going to pray Luther's morning prayer. Listen to this. Martin Luther, Dr. Martin Luther, felt it was real important to pray this prayer uh, in the morning. And so it's a beautiful prayer. Gosh, I really love it. So think about this prayer as we pray it together, okay? And I pray it's going to give you real joy, all right? You know, I, I think I've said this so many times, but the more I'm learning, oh, my brother, uh, Jose Miguel, God bless you. Thank you so much for chiming in from Valencia, Spain. Really appreciate it, brother. Really do. Appreciate you. Appreciate your ministry. Appreciate so much the Lutheran Church uh, of Spain. And uh, brothers and sisters, if you haven't chimed into that on your device, on your device, do yourself a favor. Check in to the, 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 the it's called the, uh, um, uh, the Inglesia, uh, Lutherana Iglesia de España. Okay, the Lutheran Church of Spain. Check it out. You know, you're going to be blessed. Seriously, don't take my word for it. Find out for yourself. But it's a beautiful, beautiful ministry. Oh, my gosh. So thank you, brother, for chiming in. Thank you for being the bishop over there. And uh, what a blessing. And, and I love Spain. I love it so much. In fact, right now I'm, I'm, I'm flying in my simulator and I'm flying a Pan American World Airways 747 from New York to Madrid, Spain. So I've got uh, five hours and 27 more minutes yet to fly. I've got, I'm flying at 35,000 feet. <laughs> so that's my day. Amen. So anyway, let's, uh, let's pray Luther's morning prayer, okay? I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, <laughs> that you have kept me this night. What a beautiful uh, preservative. From all harm and danger, God has protected you through the night, you know. Um, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil. Wow. That all my doings in life may please you. Beautiful, right? For into your hands I commend myself, my body, and my soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Boy, what a beautiful prayer that Dr. Martin Luther formulated, all right, for us. So, brothers and sisters, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, brothers and sisters, I really pray that you've had a tremendous time today with our Lord and that you've received real peace today. And uh, so I've got some things I got to do. You know, I got back to my house here. I got to figure out how to turn the heat on. <laughs> it's cold here. And I haven't figured that out yet. So I got to get that done today and stuff. So anyway, uh, go in God's grace and mercy. Serve him today as he gives you those wonderful opportunities. And I'm flying to Spain, to Madrid, Spain, uh, on my simulator um, on a Pan American World Airways 747 from New York's John F. Kennedy to Madrid Baja, uh, M Madrid's airport. I can't pronounce it very well. But uh, so I get my happies on that. All right. So until we meet again, uh, wheels up, flaps retracted, and blue skies. <laughs>